Okay. Yeah. So let's start. Uh, <clears throat> today's uh, casual discussion after of leading the consciousness uh, research. And we will introduce the paper the How Young Children Integrate Information Sources to Influence the Meaning of Words, written by four uh, Tesla and Malik and Frank in 2021 in Nature Human Behavior. And at first, we will introduce ourselves. So for me, I'm Yoichi Watanabe, as a PhD student in Kyoto University and studying the development of consciousness. And, uh, Aniko. Hi, I'm Aniko Kustar. I'm a PhD student at Monash University. Um, my name is Yo Takawashima. I'm a research assistant at ATI in Japan and Monash University in Australia. Okay, and uh, so I will uh, summarize this paper uh, at first time. And uh, in this study, the authors uh, examined the, how young children integrate the information to learn uh, language, something, a word, and a meaning. And in this study, the authors are uh, decided three factors as a, for the learning of learning of a meaning of words. Firstly is the and uh, it's a, it's a speaker's information. And secondly is the uh, common ground. So which means that the the knowledge of the common between the listener and the uh, speakers. And thirdly, is the uh, knowledge of the, uh, of the um, English words, something in the, for the young children, that is so easy, but uh, what's it, like the checkup order, something the difficult word, children cannot uh, know the, so for the learning of the, uh, new words or meaning, it is important the speaker's information and the common uh, common sense and the children's knowledge of words. So, and there is no study to uh, find that the, how integrate this information to learn. So, uh, the authors uh, examined the, these things by the Bayesian uh, analysis and uh, yes. And this letter shows that the, um, in fact, the three, informa three information is important to learn um, new words or meaning by comparing the models. So the, the study concludes that the, yes, three it is important for integration between uh, three factors. Yes, this is the uh, summarized and in detail of the uh, method. Firstly, for th this is for children, so for, uh, they, they use the right animation or cartoon uh, method. So, firstly, it's the uh, so this in this way, the, the character is in the center, and the right and left is the uh, something table. Table, right table, and the table and the character is there. And on the table, it uh, which one the uh, something dark dark door. So it is uh, known the children, or it or one thing and or the the other thing is something the un, unknown object, and they there didn't know the name of this. And 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 and, and the cartoon is not uh, 
this the only the table there is the object on the table only and and return to the character and character set or it's a, write something um, a meaning word work or something or format or something and the, the character requires them so children if children uh, uh, estimates the character set the new object is new object the character wanted children uh, touch the screen to the uh, unknown character an unknown object it is it is correct in this study because children estimate unknown objects and named by the uh, ca uh, ca animation character like something so yes and uh, and the characters characters information is the factor one factor and the, the other factor is the common sense common and sense because common sense the character and the children is here and the character C is the object so it is the common sense condition the, and the, the factor that's from common sense and sadly the uh, children's uh, vocabulary of the sentence but for, for 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 example the duck duck doll is so famous so children know but the other things are something different things children did not know after so if the the children's unknown said like say something say uh Papaya, 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 children, if papaya is a fruit, didn't know the thing. And, and the other thing is also unknown thing, of course. So children cannot uh, decide it, uh, character what it is. So like this, yeah, it is my, it is my summarized. So please add and comment. How about Yota? Well, okay. So first three, we have been reading paper related to consciousness, right? But this paper is a bit different from consciousness research. So the main focus is learning in, in and children. So when you talking or when we talking about integrations, maybe it's very important to know that the integration and uh, the meaning of integration is in this paper is a bit different from something in the consciousness research. And I think the main focus of this paper is how the children can uh, use the knowledge or inference to learn new language. And then this first, this study does not or show any um, neural recording. So all based on behavior results. And then this paper proposed some um, uh, models to explain the behavioral model, which uh, Ryoichi explained. Um, I think, yeah, that's it from me. And um, Aniko, if you want to add something. Yeah, so I think, uh... It's a, yeah, it's a very nice paper because they are mostly focusing on the computational modeling and um, they set up these, um, so they have the main model, which is this, um, what is it called? Rational integration model. And then they also have set up um, different models. So as it was mentioned before, this rational integration model has these three components of three different sources of, of the information. And then 
Uh, but I think it's very fascinating that they they set up alternative models uh, where they kind of took out each of these three uh, components and and kind of lesion them, so to say. Or um, yeah, so that was very nice, and and I think it was a, a very powerful way to show that uh, uh, this integrative model is uh, is more is better explaining the experimental data and it's a, it seems like a better model than um, compared to the other models where one of the sources of the information was not accounted for not not integrated into this model and then they have also looked at uh, uh, so additional models with uh, the, where, where they introduce certain biases or or um, some kind of a, an additional step of evaluating uh, the importance of these information sources, and yeah, so I think it's it's uh, definitely. I think the the point of this paper is is the the attempt of of fitting a computational model or or creating a computational model for language learning. Um, yeah, overall, I think it, it's I think we have summarized the the most most important sections of it and yeah we can i i have a couple of questions but uh yeah go ahead i can i can wait wait, wait a bit thank you for addition additional comment and explanation so Yeah, the first we we can discuss and think for the something unknown question or how about you that do you have some question now? Yeah, I, I have some questions, but probably uh, not related directly related to uh, this research, so I can go after Anigwe's question. Uh, okay, so my question basically is about the three information sources. So this, uh, uh, the expectation of uh, compar compar cooperative and informative uh, speaker, uh, the second one is shared common ground, and the third one is semantic knowledge. Mm. So these were the main three factors or, uh, or main sources of information that the authors assume people use. And yeah, I, I mean, obviously uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to set up these, uh, you know, basic components of any model. Mm. But it's hard for me to, to say how, how independent these are. Like for me, at least intuitively, uh, and I have to say that I'm not very familiar with the developmental psychology um, literature, but so these three information sources seem to be very related or, or very connected to each other. Um, yeah, like for example, specifically the the cooperative and informative uh, speaker expectation and the shared common ground. Um, ha have you guys understood what's what the difference is? What's the difference between these two exactly? Yeah, for me, normally I think they these information factor is related uh, because normally firstly the how to um, when children uh, learn the words new words uh, almost uh, for the parents something mother or father uh, thought or uh, talk with children and uh, oh this is a uh, blah blah or this is blah blah well wow, so blah blah is so cute and also something. So uh, the information, the first factor, uh, speaker's information is 
something like the parent information and the secondary some common set, common uh, condition is uh, like parents and their parents and children to uh, the same uh, context or condition. So I think these, these two information are so so more uh, in, integrated. Yeah, I guess it's, um, I, so do I understand it correctly that like in, in that way, um, the first source of information is like this uh, cooperative and informative speaker is more about the, the speaker itself that was in, in this instance, the little frog character. And then the shared common ground is more about the, the context or the, um, yeah, or the situation or, or the, the scene that they were and like like how long they have been inter interacting and uh that was it like yeah that, that this was an interaction between them uh, is is that is that how you understood this yes um basically yes um so i think um in both information source we need uh, the speaker that is the source of confusion i guess but for the speaker informativeness um what the listener use is only the information from the speaker on the other hand in the common ground or the the other uh, information source the speaker at least communicate with the listener in some way so i think there are some kind of agreement between the listener and speakers and that gives some context in the conversations so that's the i think the main or difference between the two information sources but i think they are kind of or strongly uh, related to related uh, so information sources so i kind of see the differences between two but it's i would say really re related or correlated Um, I think that we can clearly says that the first two information sources are completely different from the last uh, information source, uh, which is the semantic knowledge, because that is um, acquired or from the past, from experiences, not from the current situations. So that's a, you know, quite different from the other two information sources. Yes, I think so. But in this study, in the in this uh, design, the the first information cut cutting character and secondary common uh, ground is related. I I mean that I want to mean that the, in the uh, biological situation, of course the. Uh, Speak the information and the common uh, con common uh, context is in it's so related, but in this study's uh, paradigm, yeah, as as Aniko said that frog character and and uh, this one the common common context how how related was how related is um unknown for us or I think is it clear is it clear well I guess it's kind of established in the task so so I haven't spent that much time reading the the exact methodology 
but what I understand is that um, so they had different trials and then they had these frog characters showing different uh, objects and then the new object or naming it and then it disappeared or then um, and I think there were other trials. Yeah, then it came back and uh, so yeah, so I guess it was the interaction between the frog and the and the the child that um, kind of created this common ground that like you know that if if the frog for example would have just randomly like didn't like for example didn't uh, or wouldn't have directed its attention to the child and then there's there's no interaction or yeah um, I guess. But but yeah, it's 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 a bit uh, I guess difficult to to yeah understand what what exactly or how how this uh, situation was perceived by by the children, but apparently they learned words so or they, they learned the meaning so it was it was um, kind of a, a word learning experience or word learning situation from them so yeah. Do you have any other question, Aniko? Uh, if not, maybe I can ask my question. So my question is kind of implied in my um, the summary, but again, and this study focuses only on behavior, not a neural basis of uh, these behavior. So I'm wondering whether these model also can be applied to a neural model? Or, I don't know, let's say the, here there are three information sources uh, assumed, but how or where are they represented in the brain? So probably the knowledge, well, what knowledge? can be related to memory, I think. But the other two, so information sources, I don't know where can be, or where in the brain, there are they uh, represented in the, and um, also here, the important importance of learning is the, Oh, sorry, the core component of this learning process is that integrations, but this paper did not mention anything about the brain region where in integrated these three so information sources. So I was wondering where is the core of the integration in the brain? What do you think about this? I think um, it would be actually quite tricky to uh, equate these different brain regions or, or equate these information sources to actual processes in the brain because my understanding or my assumption was uh, that the, the expectation of a cooperative and informative speaker is actually more of a general principle how language processing occurs. So it's not specifically, or not necessarily, you know, a separate brain region that activates because it kind of signifies this, but it's more like kind of the whole system is built with this assumption that in this phase of language acquisition, the speaker or kind of most of the, most of the interactions or most of the adults, um, they will act this way. And I don't know if, if, if it would be straightforward to find this, you know, a specific region or, um, yeah. But for example, we could maybe show, or we could maybe look at um, children with uh, autism or any kind of uh, language development issue and see whether these assumptions don't work. And so for example, again, I'm, very not sure about this, but I 
think I have read somewhere, or I have heard somewhere that um, one of the reasons why uh, children with autism, or one of the ideas or theories behind the fact that uh, we're explaining that children with autism have some issues um, developing language because they don't have the, the they, they may not be interested in eye contact with their parents or with adults. And it's more difficult for them to kind of bring up this communication um, channel, so to say. So uh, I guess it, it would be possible to, to look at, and I'm, I'm sure someone will, will do so. Uh, so to, to examine these, um, these information sources and their and their uh, contributions in in situations when when the language development is is not typical or not um, you know not like in the average language development or not similar to language uh, to average language development speed. I see. I see. <laughs> so if we look at the figure one, which explain the parameters or the increase of parameter as, the fun as a function of age. So if you, or as you grow up, the parameter just increase, which means that the person, the child, is more sensitive to something or get, I don't know how to explain, but like get more meaning from the information. Is it correct? And um, Aniko mentioned that autism, but for those uh, children, the, the amount of information they receive is limited compared to the other healthy um, children so for them it's very difficult to um, get or the increase the parameter through experiences or is it correct or so you you mean that the Age effect is caused by the expect, expect experience or the like the age development, which is which is correct, which is critical one. You sorry, this is you. What you want to know? So what I want to uh, say is that um, I think for the Aniko uh, mentions. Then one example of eye contact. So for mm -hmm. autism uh, children, it's a bit difficult to get information, first of all. So compared with the healthy children, probably the autism children get less information compared to the healthy children. And that means that for autism children, it's a very difficult to you know, fit the parameter over the age, which means that, or which result to the disability in language. Or, um, so yeah, again, uh, what is or how? What is information? So I think we should be careful about saying that whether whether a child uh, receives more or less information but it's also about you know the their expectations so again if we go back into this um, active inference framework that we talked about a couple of weeks ago um, like there might be a way or, or potentially uh, children with autism autism they they may receive very similar information however their um, you know their expectations or, or the weights of that information and how that information kind of um, impacts their knowledge and their top-down processes may be different. So again, I think 
this is something that that you know with a, with a simple ex example if you if you go into a situation assuming that okay here's this this person i have to pay attention to that person and they will tell me what is this object uh, then it will be more quick for you to kind of establish what is this object if you don't know exactly like what will guide or what will give you relevant information so yeah so i think it's it's difficult to say what is what what is the exact difference between uh neurotypical and um non neurotypical uh development but yeah i mean it's it's yeah i don't know but uh, I didn't want it to bring up autism and kind of <laughs> delay, derail the conversation. Okay, okay. So yeah, maybe the word or the way how I explain was not good. Yeah. So I don't say that the autism children do not uh, receive information um, similarly or or the same amount of information as the healthy uh, children. But what I wanted to say is that they kind of miss um, opportunities to learn language for some reason. Uh, for example, in this experiment, to learn a new language, um, it assumes that there are three uh, information sources. Um, they are important for learning. Um, new uh, vocabulary, but if I, I don't know, were, if I do not like, let's say, watching this uh, frog and can't uh, sit down in front of the display, then that means that I lost the opportunity to learn a new language. So in this sense, what I wanted, I, in, yeah, in this sense, I mean the loss of information or less information but it basically means that the Jason lost the opportunity of learning and that can be uh, explained in the autism or can be applied to the autism uh, children and the actually or what I wanted to say mm. I see yeah, and in fact, um, however, the OS, ASD children, there is there is a high uh, high high language ability. Sorry, there is a ASD children who have the high language ability. Is of course there, so. And the eye contact is one of the social cues, and also, and of course the ASD children uh, miss the uh, social signal to learn new words. But but actually they they learn the words. The I think the other uh, approach or other process. So typical neurotypical children so social cue and the, what is the what is the object their parents or some the someone uh, see and uh, point it and the children uh, integrate object and uh, speak as information and common condition or something but i think the ac children it's not it's the have not the social cue and eye contact, but of course they study, they learn the object and the speaker's uh, words and cutting words. So, yes, so it is, I think, important point. And in this study, for the like the typical children's uh, first model, first computational model study. So, next step, we uh, they or we will, we can do for the something, the, the ASD or something children's uh, integration learning model, I think. And, and, and I think the first one of the 
speaker's information or something, uh, speaker or character now know something. It is, I think, it, and it is important for like the mentalizing or theory of uh, TM, uh, I forget the word. But so, so it is important to uh, read, read the or believe. Uh, so it's important for children to catch the, the speaker's uh, intent or belief or something, knowledge. So it is so in this study, in this uh, factor, it is, I think, important to self mentalizing. So, uh, so as this, in this uh, point, uh, as the student, the SD children uh, have the hard hard to this, I think. I see. So, you're, you, you are saying that um, there might be another information source, right? Uh, which is not considered in this uh, model. So for different people, maybe we need to consider different uh, information sources. That's the, I mean, I think the important point. Yeah, I guess uh, with what you just said, with this, with this um, knowledge or or belief of intent, or or is it a theory of mind that you were thinking? Yeah, so um, I guess it's it's quite fascinating that, um, for example, even this little frog character has uh, you know people or children assume intent. Of course, like that's why you know um, animated uh, films are very very. Um, like entertaining because people very easily assume yeah intent to almost anything mm, but yeah it's it's also i think interesting that that even in in this situation with like a very you know basic like little simple frog character there is this uh, theory of mind or at least some level of theory of mind assumed Mm -hmm. I actually did not notice about that point, but yeah, I feel it's very interesting. Um, I think the reason why we can assume that they have their kind of thought or ideas, I mean the frog in the, this um, experiment, is that they speak or uh, language, English, English, let's say, oh, it, I don't know, there is a dog or there is something that, that's a very important. Um, but let's say if we replace frogs with like just a square without any like eyes or mouse or just a square or a box, can we still say that, or can we still get the same results from with this um, experiment? It's a uh, very interesting for me. Yeah, no, that would be very interesting. I know with adults, there have been some studies where they kind of um, showed uh, a set of moving geometric objects and then um, kind of asked people to describe what happened and then they narrative they, they created these narratives of like yeah the the I don't know the rectangle has been following the the uh, triangle and then it attacked the triangle and then it's like obviously there's no there are no intentions there but the people were very quick to um yeah to to assume these or or to kind of yeah just kind of inject meaning um yeah, but yeah, that I think that would be very interesting to see whether you know a very very uh, well. Okay, so it would be interesting to see whether you know a very simple object like as a speaker how it would um, interact with the uh, effectiveness of the learning. But then you have this issue of you know for you you don't necessarily know because like 
if if it's like a, for example a boring object maybe the the child loses interest so is is that is that the the lack of theory of mind or like is is it is it like the um attribution of the of the speaker whether it's whether it's informative or whether it's interesting enough or, yeah um i'm not sure or it's difficult i guess to tell So probably uh, that can be uh, re reflected or included in speakers' informativeness in this uh, framework or model, but not sure how much that will affect in this uh, affect the results itself. Hmm. So, um, do you have any um, other? Questions, Ryoichi, Wow, Aniko? Yeah, um, I don't have any, but for the uh, method, I have a, a question. I'm, I'm wondering how to, how to measure the speaker's informativeness in this study. I'm wondering, but because it's only the frog or some the other animals. So how how to measure or course ask 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 children or the the character is how 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 much character is info informative or something? Do you catch the information? So is it? A question to my comments or just to this, general? this is yeah this is study ah uh, if so I don't know like uh, first of all your question is not uh, clear to me because the speaker's informativeness is just how much the listener can uh, infer what the speaker thinking of. Yeah, so in this study, is the authors measure it? Um, I don't think so, no. So, so I'm wondering, I, I, I think the trend is right, but this trend is what's measured in this study or how to, a measure because yes of course the, i think they also used to the many animals frog or the other character i i let the supplementary but i i don't know how to measure this specific speak at informativeness just just for uh, a met methodological question so I guess one of the ways or, or one way to kind of quantify this would be the uh, the, the alternative models, um, what mm -hmm. they have tested. And so there was specifically uh, a model which assumed that the speaker is non, it's not informative. So it was the mm -hmm. no speaker informativeness model. And in that model, they have assumed that the, the child kind of um, assumes that, that the communication is not informative mm -hmm. and doesn't pay attention to um, mm -hmm. the, the utterance. Uh -huh. But uh, so um, I guess one, one, one way uh -huh. would be to kind of yeah, compare these two models and ex like the explain variance. But uh, of course, that's, that's more like a indirect way to, to measure this, I guess. Um, yeah, but so in, in that way, I think it's quite nice that they have uh, set up these, these alternative models as well. But yeah, so uh, further than that, I, I am not sure either, actually. Yeah, thank you.
Any other question, Yurichi or Aniko? Um, so I have a question that is more more of a, a long shot or or a bit of a um, wider scope. So uh, yeah, as Yota you mentioned, this study is about language uh, acquisition, and it's it's hard to relate it to consciousness, uh, you know, in a very straightforward way. And I think this is um, yeah quite an interesting aspect. Because if you would, I think if you would ask people on the street, like completely naively, you would say that language is a very important, uh, you know, uh, part or factor in, in consciousness. And then on the other hand, um, my very limited understanding of the current consciousness theories say that uh, they're like in many theories, you know, in just the uh, main theories that we usually discuss, IIT, um, global, works, global neural workspace theory, uh, etc. So uh, higher order thought theories, all these theories, like, is there a clear role of language in these theories? And I, I, I can't really tell, or I don't know of. Um, yeah, do you guys know any kind of, um, yeah, any, any, implication or any kind of what li the literature says about the the importance of language um, within you know IIT or, or global neural workspace theory shortly I don't know so I'm a bit skeptical about the relation between the consciousness and language because as a human being, like uh, we are living in a social environment, society. So the language is very important to, uh, in a sense, survive in the society. But if you think about, I don't know, um, much or any other animals, dogs or cats, and I would say that they still have some kind of uh, language but it's quite limited compared to um, human beings. So given that, not sure whether the language is very important for our consciousness or I'm not sure whether we can uh, relate uh, language to our consciousness. So I think I would argue with that. Oh, sorry. Uh, just just one one more one note on this. So, if you think about that, um, like language allows, I think, more efficient information processing, because you have a, uh, yeah, better tools and and, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not saying that it's it's, yeah. Obviously, it's not not. Uh, um, um, Oh, what's the word like um, um, necessary uh, criteria for for consciousness? Because I, I I believe that yeah animals are conscious, um, but I would also I would also think that language has an important role in in creating our conscious experience, or like kind of moderating or or influencing it, and uh, yeah I don't know the relationship. Um, and I think it's like, for example, I think if you would compare, like, let's say there's a person, or maybe let's say there's a child who has no language um, skills at all, versus a child who has, I don't know, some language skills. Um, like, I think their brain would qualitatively process information differently. Or, or maybe organize itself a bit differently or, yeah, I don't know. But uh, yeah, what do you think? So you're basically saying that uh, some person with consciousness, ah, oh, sorry, uh, some person with language, um, or if he compares um, person with language and person without language, their experience or conscious experience should be 
quite different. Is that your point? Yeah, I, I, I guess so. I mean, not necessarily, you know, the very basic of like basic percept of blueness or pain, but I think after that, like everything, you know, how how you how you react to that, what's your what's your next step, so to say. I think it's it depends or language has um yeah a very fundamental i don't know role in it yeah yeah i agree with i or i agree that language can affect the conscious experiences let's say the you know the panda pictures Chan always shows if we do not have any language or categorization, we no one can distinguish, distinguish the species of panda, right? In that sense, maybe language can affect the conscious experiences. Um, but um, that language is necessary within society, which means that when you communicate with other people, so let's say, someone grown up in i don't know forest where there are no human beings in that area and can we say that the person do not have any conscious experiences i would not say they do not have any conscious experiences so in that sense, the consciousness can affect the experiences that I agree with that, but not sure whether the, uh, sorry, uh, the language is necessary for consciousness. I, uh, sorry, uh, language can affect the conscious experiences. I agree with that, but I'm not sure whether the language is necessary or the su yeah, necessary sufficient component for conscious experiences. Not sure whether I my like reply makes sense or not. See, and uh, your point is so important. I think so. Language is needed for consciousness. So, so I, 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 I think that ch infants or children's uh, study is important for conscious research. And in fact, do you know the child childhood amnesia? So it means that normally uh, we we don't memory before the two or three years old because uh, that is we don't have the episode episode memory during birth from birth to uh, about three years old, and this, and I think this is caused by the uh, difference of the consciousness or conscious perception or something. But one of the major explanation is that the language. So normally we 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 uh, we write the episodic memory by language. So, and after, before after two, two or three years old, they don't have a uh, good language ability. So they can't, they couldn't uh, make the epistemic memory. This is the one major explanation of the childhood, childhood amnesia. And, and it is, it is, I think it is related to the, your, a question or your your discussion our discussion that uh, language the relationship between the language and uh, uh, consciousness i think it is so in interesting what do you think i uh, i don't know but i again 
would not say that the conscious uh, language is not necessary for uh, consciousness. And you raised the example of um, childhood amnesia. I do not know a lot about it, but the problem is that we just can't ask, or we can't ask the, the yeah, I don't know how to age uh, zero, one year old uh, children to what they are experiencing. Because, but let's say if we have some, I don't, I don't know, the, if we understand some uh, physical mechanism of consciousness and then we apply that method to um, children and I would say that we can find that evidence that children have um, consciousness without uh, language. But this is just my uh, guess, not based on evidence, so. Yeah, yeah, no, so I think that's, I think what we, I, I think all agree on, uh, but it, it is, it's a crucial aspect is that consciousness, like language is not, necessary for conscious experience i i think that's yeah so i i fully agree with that however i think it changes conscious experience but to which extent you know if it's if it's the difference between oh i have you know i don't know i have conscious experience without language and then a bit more i don't know something or or be different with language so if it's if it's more or less or just different or who knows like you know maybe maybe um, without language everything is very intense because you don't I don't know it just it just so maybe maybe basically they have more consciousness it's like I don't know who knows um, but yeah I, I completely agree that yeah developmental psychology is such an important field for consciousness research. Mm -hmm. I see, I see, I see. So, like here, if we ask, um, or if we let's say think about the time scale or lifespan, it's very difficult to uh, test that um, because you know the children cannot report. But if we think about the like second language, like in our case or at least in my case, my native Jap uh, language is Japanese, and then after that, I learned um, English. So in that sense, uh, the, I don't know, the amount of lang life language or the word or the expression is in just increased. Um, here, what I com can compare is that the experience before learning English and after mastering English. So do my experience change before and after? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so this is one of uh, kind of related to the, um, um, I think S S Sapiro or Sapir, and Wolf's hypothesis with uh, whether you know, like the language or, or the, the words, you know, color your experiences and the, the most common uh, example of that, like, yeah, if so, for example, if like a, an Inuit has a thousand or, or I don't know, 10 words to describe white or snow, but you have one, then is it different? Um, but yeah, I think in, in, in that way, I think it's, like this paper is also kind of shows that uh, um, you know adult language acquisition and and children or child language acquisition is is widely different because in adult who do you actually have these concepts and then you just learn an alternative uh, you know like you just you 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 like for example I wouldn't say that my experience of orange has changed when I learned the, the English word orange, I still have the same experience. Or yeah, I, I would say I, I, I am fairly confident that I, have, I still have the same experience of it before uh, I, knew the, I knew this word. 
Um, yeah, but on the other hand, for example, uh, there are some interesting, interesting um, like suggestions based on different types of emotions, for example. So different languages have different type of, some, some languages have um, words for emotions that maybe don't exist in other languages. And I guess, um, yeah, again, the, the most typical example is uh, schadenfreude, uh, which is, you know, being happy because of someone gets hurt. Um, and uh, yeah, so like, you know, if, if uh, experiencing or knowing this word or using this word, does it mean that you experience this more often? Um, yeah, I don't know. Yes, it is so interesting. So, and and I think that what yeah, it is our discussion is related to the representational ability or representation and uh, something. Yes, I I also interested in that. Yeah, in Japanese, uh, uh, in English, apple is a red fruit something, and also we, uh, Yota and I lead the. Lingo in Japanese, apple. Lingo, when, uh, when we see the lingo, the uh, sentence, we imagine the apple same way. And also in French, pom is the uh, apple. So I, I let the pom, I imagine the red fruits. So as a language, as a, yes, it is so, in, it is interesting for me. So, the same word, the different words, but the same uh, representation. I think it is related to the uh, consciousness change, changed by the language. Yeah, I guess it's it's very difficult uh, so to to like it would be very difficult to disprove this because I think it's it must be a a very minor change or I I mean I don't know but um, yeah I don't know it's it's very difficult to disprove that language doesn't change conscious experience at all but I guess we could prove that it doesn't change it quite significantly compared to other conditions. Yeah. But in any case, I think, um, so yeah, just another idea I had when you brought up um, childhood amnesia. So yeah, I think that's, that's yeah, that is such an interesting phenomenon and um, yeah, it would be it would be very interesting to see whether um, so whether the information integration in the brain is kind of is there really like a turning point or 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 it's more like a process of of you know getting more differentiated and integrated and then finally you get to have these kind of episodic memories because I know that some people have like maybe they recall just, you know, some kind of scenes or like just, um, um, yeah, just maybe a sound or, or, or a visual experience. Um, but yeah, I know it's, it's also quite rare. Okay, so I think we've already discussed this paper for about uh, how hour. So do you have any other question or comments? Any thoughts? Nothing? Uh, for me, nothing. Okay. So maybe we can wrap up here. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. See you.